Hello, my name is Dara Kretsenko. I'm an assistant professor in digital humanities working at the University of Helsinki in Finland. When the burning wall fell on the 9th of November 1989, I was in Leningrad, USSR, today known as St. Petersburg in Russia, with my mom, preparing for my third birthday. As a child, I wanted to become an archaeologist. I wanted to discover objects from the past and understand how people used to live. Though this is not exactly what I do today, I think my interest in understanding human societies is very well covered in my work. My research breaks a wall to sustainable infosphere. On this picture, you can see people in a digital detox camp. They went to the woods, they restrained from using any digital devices, and they tried to improve their well-being. When I first heard about the concept of digital detox camp, it reminded me of my own childhood. My parents always used to bring me to the countryside to get some fresh air and stay away from the polluted city of Leningrad, where we used to live. Though getting some fresh countryside air is definitely a great idea for an individual, it can hardly solve the problem of environmental pollution in big industrial cities. I guess you can see my parallel here. The digital environment we live in is polluted. It can cause harm to people. And many phenomena, fake news, cyberbullying, data exploitation to name just a few, they require fixing. So how can we deal with these pressing digital harms that intoxicate our societies, politics and interpersonal relationships? My solution is to learn lessons from environmental policy and governance. In the past 50 years, we made a significant leap in our thinking from seeing the natural environment as a source of commodities and object management to recognizing its intrinsic value as a prerequisite for flourishing of all life on our planet. Given the accelerated speed of the digital revolution, we do not have another 50 years to wait to start caring for our digital environment. The good news is that there are many concepts, instruments and best practices that we can transfer from the natural to the digital environment and move towards a sustainable infosphere. The principal innovation of my research is to suggest a holistic infosphere protection program. Let me explain this innovation step by step. The infosphere, by analogy with the biosphere, is seen as an environment populated by informational agents, both human and non-human. I argue that we need to protect the infosphere, similar to how we protect the biosphere. Borrowing from environmental policy and governance, I suggest to adopt policies that recognize the intrinsic value of the infosphere as a prerequisite of social life, rather than use human-centric and instrumented approaches, like data asset management. Finally, I advocate a need of a program, meaning a global and coordinated course of actions. The holistic infosphere protection program that I'm proposing will be a tangible instrument to ensure peace, democracy and well-being of human society amidst the rapidly developing information and communication technologies. Though most people today are conscious of and concerned about the climate change, transformation of large socio-economic systems towards sustainability is no easy task, as we all witness. I reckon we will face similar challenges with global infosphere protection. There are incumbent interests and power, but what is at stake is the flourishing of human societies. So the question that keeps me laying awake at night is how? How can we make this infosphere protection program globally effective? My mom thinks that analogies are a powerful tool and that using analogies from the natural environment would offer a much-needed shortcut in mitigating the negative effects of the digital revolution. 